Okay, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name's Sam Parsley and I'm a co-chair of the fmd &I Working Group, that stands for Diversity and Inclusion, uh, with Talini Jayabakrama, who is our chair. Uh, welcome to the webinar today and I'm delighted to introduce Yvette Chivers, also known as DJ Miss Chivers. Uh, she is currently joining us from Newcastle, Australia, where it is extremely early in the morning. So thank you so much, Yvette, for getting out of bed. Uh, well, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you've been to bed. <laughs> I have been to bed. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Just checking. Yeah, yeah, and you can see me, can you? I don't know if you can see yeah. me. Yeah, it's Brilliant. amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, that, um, yeah. to talk about today uh, the VIP experience um, we're going to hear about today as you can see on your screen and it's a project devised and managed by Yvette uh, and the not-for-profit company Sync Inspire CIC which aims to throw light on the challenges faced by DJs, producers and music artists in the electronic music industry as well as electronic music fans and club and festival goers who are blind or have low vision whilst creating increased accessibility and awareness of sight loss across the dance music world. The project is supported by Native Instruments and it's something that I knew nothing about and I had really never thought much about at all until I met Yvette at her um, ADE panel in 2021. Gosh, it's a long time ago now. Um, and since then, as we're gonna hear in a minute, she's been working hard on all sorts of projects under the banner of the VIP experience. So uh, I'm going to hand over to Yvette now and uh, we're going to hear all about it. So thank you and welcome. Thank you very much, Sam. And uh, thank you for inviting me. It's, it's a great honour to be here. Um, and hello to everyone that's joined us. And also hello to everyone that's going to be watching afterwards as well. Um, yes, it's 5am here in Australia. Um, I'm not Australian, as you can tell from my accent. Um, and you have to bear with me because I'm quite tired. But I've got a strong coffee um, in hand, so it's all good. Um, so... The topic of accessibility is obviously massive and lots more people uh, industry-wise in the music industry as a whole and electronic music industry are getting on board, which is great. Um, there's been lots of movement in the past few years. Um, what I wanted to do was kind of niche it down even more. And I was worried when I first came up with the, not the idea because it's there anyway, people have low vision, but the branding and the um, focus um, of VIP experience was that it'd be too niche and that there wouldn't be much demand for it but actually as I did more research and connected with more people there is there is a huge need for it and actually um, especially within the club scene um, I'll go into more, kind of more detail as we go through but just to give you a highlight um, example or highlight thought is that um, clubs are darker <laughs> generally um, they're harder to navigate anyway for any clubber because the lights, the strobes, um, the fact it's late at night. Um, so imagine for low sized or, or blind people, it's, it's even more because it, the other senses become overwhelmed with the sound, with the vibrations, and you want to enjoy yourself. And, and also the reason why still now to date, um, there's some really good statistics I can go through with you um, all, is that it's about disclosure. We shouldn't, ex we shouldn't expect people to, dis to disclose their disabilities, um, whether it's, you know, neurodivergence, whether it's um, a physical disability, whether it's hidden or seen. We shouldn't expect people to have to disclose it, to be able to feel safe and have a good time. Um, so that's why there seems to be a lack of statistics and the lack of knowledge in this field is because of disclosure, but we couldn't, we, we shouldn't um, expect people to disclose it. So that's what we're trying to encourage is not people to disclose, but for the people in place and the, and the organisations in place to have the toolkits available so no one has to disclose. They're just there. They're just there as standard. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of organisations are doing this in terms of music as a whole, in terms of live events as a whole, um, but not so much in dance music and electronic music. So that's what I'm trying to inspire and trying to trying to bring to the forefront um, with people's um, thoughts and especially with venues and festivals that are to do with electronic dance music and, and studios and the production of music. Because again, they're quite different environments from perhaps live music um, situations. Um, please do ask questions as we go along as well. And Sam, you know, do ask me anything you think people will be interested in knowing. Um, but I'll just go through through the slides that I prepared and, and then we can do a big Q&A at the end anyway. 
Um, so yeah, next next slide, please. So, um, the Arts Council England obviously funds a lot, a lot of really good projects, and a two thousand twenty one report, which isn't that long ago. Sorry, that's my that's my um brother's cat trying to get out. If you can hear that noise. <laughs> So a Arts Council England report said that 1.8% of the music industry's workforce identified as having a disability, but the national average is 18%. So that's a huge disparity, which only leads to thinking that it's about disclosure and people not wanting to um, tell people about the disabilities. This is this is the workforce, um, not people that are going to the events. There's two different areas in, in the whole of accessibility. There's people that work in it and people that go and enjoy music. And we'll cover both. Um, so this was highlighted by um, Ben Price. Um, so next slide, please. So this was highlighted by Ben Price, um, who is from Harborside Management. I actually know him because we managed a um, artist together a few years ago. Um, he's based in Bristol and he saw that report and he thought, well, there's got to be something in this um, in terms of the music um, industry and live music industry. So he decided to do a survey in that year, 2021, which was supported by the Arts Council. And um, it targets anyone that works in the music um, industry itself with disabilities. And about 180 odd people replied. Some answered questions, some didn't. They skipped them. So that's why the, uh, the numbers are slightly different on each page. But out of 129 people who responded about the question of whether their disability was um, seen or not seen, 71% had a non-visible disability or health condition. Um, so that's really important because um, before I was um, diagnosed as sight impaired, and actually I forgot to say that at the beginning, but, but Sam, you can ask me that later, I'm registered sight impaired. I assumed that oh, it's terrible, really. I assumed that if you were blind, you looked blind. You had, you know, you had a cane, you had a dog. Um, you, you was it was obvious that you were you were blind or low vision. I'm completely registered, fully sight impaired. I have a guide dog, and I don't believe that I look like I have that condition. Um, but it's across the board with disabilities. There is a lot of hidden disabilities, and in that, one people can't, other people can't see it. Um, so they don't assume that you might need help or might need the extra assistance. But f on a personal level, because no one else can see it, you feel that you don't want to tell anyone. So that's a really high statistic, so 71%. Um, next uh, slide, please, Sam. So out of those who identified as having a um, hidden disability, Another massive statistic, 88% um, said they never or only sometimes disclosed that disability. And this is the important thing. The reason why, a high percentage of the reason why people don't disclose it within their business and work is because they worry about the, um, the response. I had it as well. I didn't disclose for ages. In fact, it was, I did to my friends and my family. In terms of working, um, I was doing, you know, working in marketing, doing tour planning for um, high-end um and pro audio studio brands, a lot of you know office work, a lot of out there doing event work. And I just didn't disclose because I thought they're not going to think I can do my job properly. And it's a major worry, it's a major stress. Um, but you're also then putting yourself in a situation that could be dangerous. Um, whether it's any disability, but personally myself with sight loss, you're tripping over things, um, you're knocking into things, you could be you, you could be damaging equipment. Um and it should just be given that any situation is safer and has those toolkits and um, things in place that, that allows a space to be to be accessible. Um, next slide, please, Sam. So that's Ben Pricelair. Um, and I'm sure he won't mind me using that picture because it's on the web anyway. Um, so he says himself, um, the aim isn't to ask people to disclose, but to encourage an envi environment where the conversations are normalized. Um, and this is a theme that goes that goes throughout. Um, Harborside Management, if you want to look him up, he has the same eye condition as me. It's called retinitis pigmentosa. He was a tour manager and he started realizing that he couldn't do his job properly, um, even though he kind of pushed and pushed and wanted to. And it became dangerous for him. Um, but you know, people people were were um were 
uh, supportive, but he just didn't feel he could do it. He started Harborside Management as an artist management agency, which now focuses on people in the music industry that perform and are artists with disabilities. And he's got a great roster. So do look him up. Um, he's on a board for a lot of lot of really interesting uh, uh, organisations as well. One being um, Attitude is Everything, which I'll tell you about more shortly. Um, next slide, please, Sam. So this is a really good quote from um, the leasing of the Mystery Jets, um, Blaine Harrison. So at the top there, um, I'll describe the slide. So on the left-hand side, you've got a tech rider for a DJ. I've seen many of those. Um, should actually do one for myself. <laughs> actually, an accessible one. Um, and on the right-hand side, you've got um, what looks like no water, but that's actually no plastics. <laughs> um, I don't think this person wanted to... Uh, to say that it didn't want any water, but um, it's showing a, a, a kind of um, food and drink rider. So what this quote is saying is that an access rider should be mandatory, which I agree with. It's something that I didn't even think of before, but if an access rider was within a artist or DJ's or producer's total rider for their events or their tours, it would make things so simple and it would make those conversations not needed in a way because the the standard would be there so there's campaigns going on and, and Blaine Harrison's part of campaigns to try and get access riders included in those tours and those gigs which I think is a great idea um, next slide please Sam so Attitude is Everything is a UK based um, charity If uh, for those of you who have, haven't heard I'm sorry if I am telling any of you um, how to suck eggs with a few of these things but hopefully I'll uh, I'll be able to give you some nuggets of information as well. But they're a brilliant charity. They're really, really good. Ben Price is on the board um, for um, for them as well, um, which is a recently, I think it was last year or the year before. But they are kind of at the forefront of especially live music industry, making sure that um, if, uh, venues and festivals are as accessible as possible. They have mystery shoppers going out. Um, I've noticed the difference in the past few years at how simple it is now to request a companion ticket it should be standard that anyone with a disability um can go to a, a show or a gig or a festival and have a free companion ticket and i've um done my own um, mystery shopping in the last kind of year and it is becoming a lot simple from the massive companies like Ticketmaster, right the way down to smaller venues of course it depends on budget um but then there's not a high percentage of the gig goers that will be disabled in some way or identify as disabled so there won't be that many tickets that people have to give away i think that's a worry of a lot of small venues as well um you just have to prove you know people have to prove their disability and it just means it's open to people that, that need the assistance when they're there um so next slide please so from things that the attitude to everything does they like i said they're amazing but they focus very much on live music um, and and live music tours, live music venues. They have a charter that they do. They do audits for venues. But what I noticed through my research um, a couple of years ago and through personal experience is that it doesn't filter down to dance music. It doesn't filter down to the electronic music industry. And that's where I thought there was a niche and that there needs to be more um, awareness and there needs to be more people talking about it. And so that's how Sam came um, to meet me at... Um, at Amsterdam Dance Event. Um, so from Ben's um, survey that he did in 2021, 129 people responded about their role that they had within live music and the music scene. The majority answered artist and artist management. Only two people answered with producer. There was no DJs, there was no um, kind of electronic music producers at all. Not to say that there aren't any, that's not the problem. It's, do they not want to disclose it? Are they um, afraid of disclosing it and people will then doubt their ability because it's very technical, both DJing and producing. Does this highlight that more research and data is needed? And I, and I think yes. Uh, next slide, please. So that's what led me on to this array of, 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 kind of activity so far. There's the ADE um, programme. We did a panel there that I was joined by the VIP experience kind of core team, um, which includes Tim Adnett from Native Instruments, includes Che Leader, 
Um, he's a low vision um, producer and MC um, and an array of other people as well, Lachi over in America. Do check out my website. It's quite small at the moment, still building it up, but it gives you an overview and it also will highlight the people that are involved. So that's um, vip-experience.org. On the right-hand side is an article in 2021. It was uh, October. So it was the same month as, as ADE. And it was just a little teaser into the um, VIP experience. We're very much um, supported by DJ Mag, which I'm I'm so grateful for. Um, last year, I did a panel at BMC, Brighton Music Conference. And then, of course, I'm, I'm joining you today. So it goes to show that I'm pushing for it, but also people are accepting that there's a need for information within the dance music scene, which, I'm, which is great. It's, it's, the, it's the perfect and much needed first step. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Yvette, could I just ask, um, just take mm. a couple of slides, actually, but it just made me think when you mentioned your website. Um, are there examples of an accessibility rider out there anywhere as sort of templates that people could use? There are, there are, but you have to really, really search for them. Uh, um, what I was going to say, and of course, it again, it, it, it very much depends on the needs of that of that individual or that band or that DJ. Um, you have to kind of you have to kind of start with a template and create your own. Um, there's no there's no one kind of size fits all um, mm. with that. But what I was going to say to anyone that's watching or anyone that's um, watching afterwards playing it back is that through yourselves or direct with me, however you want to work it, Sam, I've got a list of resources that I can send, like a whole page of links that, that would be really useful for anyone. That, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Yvette. That would be really helpful to the membership. And, and No I problems at all. Start more broadly and share this this to a, a wider constituency because we think this is super important. So Exactly. Yeah. And it also it will also give the links of every um, report and um, article that I've referenced. So you can um, go in and read it in more depth in your own time. We'll definitely circulate that round. Um, thank you. Okay, you can no have one. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, next slide. <clears throat> so, again, uh, just a repeat of that, always in sync. I love that title. That's So, Mike Wilson, he's the tech editor for DJ Mag um, UK. Um, we met well before ADE. Well, I think it was 2020 we met. I released a book in 2020 called I Inspire and it's um it includes 17 stories of people worldwide who have sight loss in different capacities but who have um you know achieved brilliant things but not not necessarily like you know flying to the moon but but got a degree learned how to cook um it ranges from that all the way up to one of my friends is in Australia that I'm going to see tomorrow I'm so excited about he got bronze in the commonwealth in the um triathlon so these stories we released in a book in 2020 and that's how Mike and I got in touch and Mike and DJ Mag have been so supportive of everything that we do which you'll see um coming up is that showing everything um Sam has that kind of gone a bit skew if there we go I zoomed yeah, perfect so that I zoomed in on the article so I don't know whether oh, brilliant because you're viewing on a phone so hopefully if people are viewing on a laptop they'll be able to see I don't, I don't know I just thought that might work that's so, sorry, sorry, you're being helpful and I didn't ruin it. <laughs> I it was helpful if anyone's looking on a phone. <laughs> Again, I'll um I've got these links for these um articles or, or at least a screen grab, but I do have um the PDFs for each of the magazines that, that is featured in these next few slides. So again, I can anyone that wants to request those from me, they can um to have a good old read. Um so next slide, please. <clears throat> Following AD in October 2021, the DJ Mag and, and Mike Wilson did a four-page spread in the magazine, and I was just blown away all about the VIP experience. And for the magazine to give it so much space just goes to show that they took it seriously, which is brilliant. And you know, from that it should filter down. Now that there has been a there was another article in DJ Mag in 2021. Um, about accessible, making clubs more accessible. Um, so, you know, the thoughts are there and the, and the discussion is there. What I'm finding difficult is we can all talk about it, but where's the action? But again, that's where that's where uh, hopefully I, myself and my team can can start to spearhead things. But it's a really good read, if I may say so myself. It, it includes all the people on the team, why they're involved, 
um, their personal experiences, whether they're sight loss, um, have sight loss or not. Um, it's, it's, it's really good. So that was perfect it, kind of publicity for us in, in 22. Um, and next slide, please. And following that, just to give you, I'm, I'm doing this not to kind of blow my own trumpet, but just to show you the fact that a really renowned magazine and the publicity is out there for these things. And it's not as niche as I thought it was or anyone would assume it would be. So last year, um, following our, our initial um, publicity, um, I was then asked to actually write for DJ Mag, which was a dream come true. Um, so in January last year, um, I started writing for the Tech Essentials part of the magazine, highlighting any tech development I could find that was to do with accessibility in the music industry. Um, and the first one was on, on Drake Music. Again, all these references will be, will be available to you. Um, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, right up there. Um, next slide, please. And then in March, um, another article I wrote alongside Che Leader, he helped me with that one. Um, and that focused on um, a couple of things. Um, Human Instruments, which is a company that develops buttons um, that actually help um, people um, with hearing loss uh, create music and actually perform music and also Echo Town Studios. Um, there's Grace and she um, runs a studio down south um, and they have made the studio fully accessible. She herself is a wheelchair user. So those are the people that I highlighted in that article. So again, it's not just with sight loss in these tech essentials um, articles, but you know the amazing technology developments that are, that are helping assist and create more a more accessible music production and music enjoyment um, environment. And next slide, please. So these are just some good quotes from people. This is Defect. He um, is a DJ, producer, DJ. Some of you may have heard of him. He's performed from Birmingham to Bergheim, you know, quite re renowned, uh, renowned uh, DJ and producer. He wasn't disabled and he became disabled. It happens to a lot of people. You, you, you have something major that happens to your body or to your brain or something happens. You don't always, not everyone's born with a disability um, and he had a seizure and I think it's Emmy he has um, I might be wrong but I think it's Emmy that he has and he, he, he you know his walking became struggled um, he couldn't do what he, he could do before and what he's saying here is that you can't just stop it getting someone into a club and this is very much club focused um, it's all well and good getting someone with a disability seen or hidden into the club safely and with no problems. But what do you, what, you know, they're forgotten about once they're in there. And it's really important that the reason why you go to a club is because you want to be part of the flow. You want to be part of the feeling, you want to be part of the vibe. And if you've got any barriers like holding you back from doing so, it's, it just ruins your night and you cannot enjoy it. Um, a really good example of this is I um, have three really good friends that we don't see each other often, including this, this lad in, in Australia, John Ho. Um, all have RP, Mitinitis Pigmentosa, which is what I have. We met at a charity event and we all went out in Amsterdam. Um, they love clubbing. They love the scene. They hadn't been out for years. And I've got still got a sight in my, in my left eye. So I, it was, um, I was kind of leading, I was guiding them. But they were really nervous. So I, I can't believe it, this happened. Actually, Dave Seaman was playing in, in Amsterdam that, that weekend. I wrote to him on Facebook, didn't know him before. And wasn't after any kind of you know special treatment just can we queue jump so the boys don't have to wait because they're, they're nervous he replied to me we had queue jump we had guest list we had um a safe space to sit um because just being able to have a safe space in the club so you're not part of the throngs when you don't need to be or don't want to be is really important and dave seaman made it such an enjoyable event for the boys that they even did get on the dance floor and and, and kind of have it have it for a good part of the evening and that this was years ago but that instilled the idea in my head as well that these these things that are very simple to everyone else are a huge huge statement to other people with sight loss in this example and it can it can make a difference whether they enjoy the uh, the scene and the music that they used to be able to um again and continue that enjoyment um next slide please so this is um james abbott he is the um i think he's the manager of a venue up north in Liverpool. I'm just trying to find my notes here. Yes, it's from Sheaf Street. It's a venue up in Liverpool. 
Um, and DJ Mag in 2021, before I did my, uh, we, before we had coverage of our, our kind of project, they did this article on, on how to make clubs more accessible. And both Sheaf Street and E1 were part of this um, article. And they were agreeing on everything that uh, that um, that the DJs and producers that uh, had um, disabilities were saying. And it's about building clubs from the from the, the ground up. Of course, a lot of clubs are in old buildings. A lot of clubs have you know got restrictions to what they can change. So it's all well and good. You know, we can we can help people with the, starting a club and building from 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 where go. But it's about changing those little things um, uh, in in established clubs as well. Um, so the bit and a big highlight is the care that's given to the not just the DJs and performers that might have disabilities and sight loss, but to the club goers. Um and a big point that was made um in this article and it, it just so rang so true with me is imagine the steps that were changed in COVID. So you had apps that you ordered your food and drink with. Um you had very clear lines on the floor where you should walk. Why shouldn't that be there for access reasons as well? If you're at a busy club, why can't or, or, or bar or, or or festival for people with access needs? There should be perhaps an app where the drinks can be brought to them, so they don't have to navigate their way through a busy club to the bar. Um, it's not showing favoritism; it's showing care and attention, and that those people can still enjoy themselves um, and not get caught up in the stress. Um, otherwise, uh, next slide, please, Sam. And this is Gemma from E1. Um, and as she's saying, it's on one level. It's fortunate and it's kind of like a happy mistake. Uh, they're, they're accessible anyway in terms of that, in terms of wheelchair users. Um, but there's other things that come into play. Again, I think people assume I did before I had any access needs. Disability means wheelchair. It's an it's a easy but silly kind of mistake to make. When you've got hidden disabilities, you've got epilepsy, if you've got neuro... Um, divergence going, uh, issues going on if you have sight loss in any version if you're if you if you're deaf all those things can create huge overwhelming sensory overloads so safe space and a quiet space that's not the smoking area is a really important thing to to put in place and it doesn't cost any money um extra lighting um on the floors on the steps it actually adds it can add to the the the, the club vibe and the ambience of it i'll show you some some pictures later um handrails all these things won't take away the vibe of the club. They'll only add to it and actually make it safer for for, for, for able people as well, for, for any club goer. Um, so next slide, please, Sam. This is just a little montage with um, you know, what a club may look like at the top. Um, I've found it over the years that I, I, I've literally become totally blind when the, when the lights are going off. So any help um, with... Um, clear pathways, any um, kind of uh, lighting on the floor would be really handy. And these are just examples of some steps. I'm always tripping over steps, whether up or down them, um, just just always um, doing it. And when I was a bit younger, people assumed I was drunk all the time, and I'm not. And I realised this is why, because I was just tripping up everywhere. It could be stickers, it could be lighting. Lighting obviously costs a bit more, but stickers. And um, the other thing is, both with sight loss and with neurodivergence, certain colours can either trigger the brain in a negative way or can pop out so it's really helpful. So it's good to um to know what colours against what contrast background can help different different um different issues. There's a lot that I've gone through there and I hope I haven't overwhelmed you all. Um but next slide please because I like these quotes that I um that I had and found years ago. This is Sandra Kleinberg. And it's just one that I love. I have it on my business cards. And um, sometimes you need to shake up your own world and the people around you, um, which I think is a lovely quote. And the next one, I hope I don't offend anyone, but it's also one of my favourites. Is It's um, Anthony Papa. And when the needle drops, the bullshit stops. And I think that's just one of the best things for the club scene because that's how it should be. The music's there. There shouldn't be any hassle, uh, whether it be from people, whether it be from the atmosphere, whether it be from access. You know the uh, the the bullshit stops there, <laughs> and that's it. There's loads we've covered, and like I said, I've got so many resources and links for people to delve into whatever area they're interested in. And um, what's important for us 
is we really want venues of any size in the UK at the moment. So I'm sorry if anyone's listening from um, outside the UK. Um, I can't, we can't help in terms of the next stage of the project for those venues and festivals outside the UK, but my resources will help. Um, but for within the UK, we really want um, venues and festivals um, for electronic music to apply because we're choosing three venues and festivals that will get um, an audit, a full audit of accessibility. And then we will go in and we will actually change things within the club or festival. Um, we're getting funding that will cover us to, to, to help three fe uh, festivals and, and venues. And since I've launched this in 2022, we've had no applications and we put it out there in DJ Mag. So I implore any venue in the UK or electronic music festival to get in touch. Wow, that, that's really quite, that's quite shocking. Actually. It's shocking. Yeah, I know. A level of privilege that, oh, I don't need to worry about this. Now, none of the people yeah. that come here are, are blind, you know. I know. It's, it's not just for blindness. We, we, we'll, the change, <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll audit. For, so um, as she does everything, they audit and have a charter, which is great. So if you have an audit on your club, and a lot of live music venues have done this, they've got a full list of audited um Live, live music venues and festivals that are on their charter it costs about five grand to have an audit because obviously that helps the charity run we're going to cover that for three okay. clubs and that's accessibility as a whole so they can see where they um will need to to make changes and then for the three that we work with um we'll, they'll get the audit but also we'll make the changes in their clubs for accessibility with sight loss i don't know why people haven't applied well wow. on our website it does say the deadline was last year but we I'm going to make changes to that, but anyone listening, either live or, or or to the record back, and I'm sure you'll help us put it out there in some social posts as well. Please yeah. apply because we want to we want to get crack on with that this year. Like so I that, said, there's a lot of talk about it, but not enough action. So. Yeah, that's clubs. Yeah. I was just about to say, if we can get the list of resources and all the PDF, what I'll do is I'll put together a mailer to our membership with this recording, all the resources and all the information about how to get in touch with you about this for venues in the UK. Brilliant. Thank you. That was so great. I really enjoyed that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh, thank you. It's, it's, it's a, it, you think, like I said, you think it's niche, but when I kind of came to, obviously I've been you know, doing talks and, 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 and writing about it for the panels, but this made it bigger and it's, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. And on that note, um, let's open the floor for questions. Does anyone have questions for Yvette? I actually have one. <laughs> and two, <laughs> I can that. Um, so you said a lot of people are not sort of disclosing the disabilities because of fear of, you know, perception that they won't be able to do their job. And you are also one of those people. Um, would you, did you find that those fears were founded or unfounded when you did start talking about it more? What was the response like for you? Completely unfounded, completely unfounded. I mean, for one, I found this tribe that I'm now part of with the whole disability in music. Weirdly enough, I don't know, you know, I hope it doesn't come across the wrong way, but it actually became a unique selling point for me, for my DJing. Because um, there's one, there's the DJing, and secondly, the kind of more corporate um, commercial studio work that I was doing. The, I was working with Prism Sound and Traction software. Prism Sound make high-end um, interfaces for studios. And they were just absolutely lovely, like so supportive. Um, the MD um, picked me up every day because I had to get two buses to, to the office because it was you know, a different village from where I was. He then started to pick me up in his car every day to get me there earlier. Just simple things like that. Like it was amazing. Um, and, and I wasn't thought of differently. It was completely in my head, but it, it's there for everyone. Um, and then in terms of my DJing, I really thought that, that people wouldn't, would, would think that, I don't know, I was weak. I mean, it's different. I'm not going to kind of whine about this, but there's one thing about being a girl in, in electronic music. There's not that many DJs, you know, there's not that many um, producers. So you're kind of fighting, you're fighting an inward battle anyway. Um, and then to add disability to it, you're like, Ugh, you know, am I, do I look like I'm a sob story? Do I look like I'm trying to get attention? And no, again, in the end of the day, it actually helped me. I've got more of a, a, an awareness platform because of it. But also, why shouldn't I be good at DJing? I'm using my ears. Like they're my tools, not my eyes. So yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, great, great question. I that was kind of what I wanted to ask, but I, I'll ask in a minute. Does anyone else have any questions? Hi, Leda. Yeah. Hi. Not more, more than a question. I really enjoyed this conversation because 
So um, my, my main job is in health and safety. So I, I work um, for a big um, tour operator. So what I do is health and safety tour, um, hotels, um, all the activities that we have, I check out everything. And, you know, last year I was uh, in Italy uh, at the music festival and uh, we had a very um, heavy rain during the festival. And I re realized there that um, the health and safety part wasn't completely out of the question. I mean, the, there was nothing for people with disabilities, anything was there. And I just remember um, being really pissed that day because um, re realizing that, you know, usually you don't even think of it because if you don't have anything, you, you don't think of it. But if you start realizing how things are working on during uh, in some venues and people are really not really, uh, you know, including something important like this uh, situations, I mean, and so, uh, sorry, I'm just confused now. I, I just want to just share this um, important topic that doesn't have to be, um, you know, dismissed somehow. But um, I'm glad that there is like VIP experience and Yvette that really raising something like very important like this one. And I really hope, um, um, you know, I can also contribute somehow with ideas uh, and uh, as a coach, by the way, I'm a life coach <laughs> working. Oh, brilliant. Thing. <laughs> yes um there is um there is a toolkit that i can share with everyone um, it's, it's available online um i can there's a pdf um document and also just an online link from ask cheaters everything um they do work across europe as well this um this uk-based charity they're not just focusing on the uk and it's a really simple diy diy guide to access so as a tour manager as an as a, um, artist manager as a venue owner as a festival runner or manager it's a really good kind of first port to go to where you can make steps actually, yourself to make things more accessible. We actually had Attitude as Everything present last year, was it Sam, or the year before? And um, I think the Just Ask guide is on the AFM website as oh, well, brilliant. And the there resources. Go. Yeah, perfect. So that's always really good to have. Um, and yeah, you're right. Like, like no one think I'm, I'm working for um, accessibility for a local uh, festival in Cambridge this summer too actually one electronic music festival could disconnect and I'm doing Cambridge Pride as well which I'm really pleased to be on board with um and that's right what if it rains and it's on grass like you need to have matting to allow the um wheelchair users um to be able to have simple access and the problem is it costs money so there are grants available the council should help if it's a pride event for example it's it's, it's council linked so again don't let those things be stumbling blocks. It should already be thought about in the kind of risk assessments and in the pre-planning about what happens if, uh, if you have adverse weather it will always affect people with access uh, requirements. Yeah, no, 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 you, I was mentioning about heavy rain because in my brain, I just remember the situation literally in the mud crossing the fields with no lights. And I was wondering, okay, so how, you know, people mm. are going to end it up. But, you know, I ended up reaching out to, you know, the CEO of the festival. And I, I ended guys. up be, being uh, probably the guy didn't like me at all, but I, I needed to use my voice because that yeah. was really too much. And then uh, I ended up seeing this year, the festival includes some more health and safety. Oh, that's protocols. good. That's really so good. Like, hey. uh, you that's know. really no. good. Well done. <laughs> yeah. No. But, uh, but yeah, I would love to maybe be in contact with you and just uh, read some, yeah. Brilliant. Some well, um, I, I'm sure... Um, if you, I'm on LinkedIn, Yvette Chivers, um, and then um, my handles online on Facebook is um, DJ Miss Chivers, and on Instagram it's Miss Chivers UK. So okay. drop me a line. Oh, I'm sure that the that the the, um, the ladies will share my email with anyone that's interested as yeah. well. So you can get, I'd you. love to hear from anyone. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else have anything they want to share? I mean, it doesn't have to be a question, just just reflections or maybe sharing why you came along today and what you hope, what you know, what you've hoped, what you've got from today or what you hoped to get. I guess I'll have you out here something because I don't, I don't okay. work in the music scene. Um, I've joked with a vet a lot. I, I love music. I dance the same way to music now for the last 30 years. I love going out and things like that. But with my role, what I just wanted to get from today was kind of like some like sector agnostic themes that I can take back to my work. And like, I think one thing I really picked up on is that we kind of 
we we yeah we 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 put it on the individual to 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 say what help they need. Um, a lot of the times, particularly in, I work in recruitment, rather than having it already there. So I don't know better text on websites and anything like that really as well. But yeah, we we kind of always pushing it back to somebody to say, do you need any help? Rather than um, kind of offering it from the start. Really. So it's just getting some things like that really. So, and a bit of life in that's great. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a really good point, isn't it? This this um, individualization of your own, you know, you sort out your own problems, basically, under the banner of we're really helping you. And I think that's a, for, for those of you that don't know, I'm a university professor and I um, research diversity issues in the music industry. And uh, I also teach equality and diversity to undergraduate students uh, who are going to be the managers of tomorrow, we hope. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely. That, that's um, uh, this, this, un assumption that we're doing all we can to help people with um with disabilities but actually what we're doing is we're increasing the load of those people to solve their own problems um and uh you know the key i think i don't know whether you would agree with that is involvement you know is it is it people. is and then when you involve people from the the marginalized community or the community that that requires the the positive action you're then expecting them often to work for free uh, so yeah. that's also uh, a big, a big issue. Um, I don't know how you feel. Do you often get? Do you, I mean, like, I, I find, well, it's not again. It's actually not these two example um, festivals that have asked me to work for free. I offered it, by the way. So disconnect and that and and Cambridge Pride. I mean, Cambridge Pride is a vol volunteer led um, event, as all prides are anyway. Um, but I get I gained a diploma from um from Falmouth University with Astrid is everything they they run a diploma um on um accessibility in, in music live live music so I gained that a couple of years ago and I wanted to use it but again I have to offer it for free so that these places these venues these festivals can see the changes and benefit before I can then even think of charging a fee mm. which is silly isn't it really but 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 I want I'm so passionate about it that. I'd rather I get my one personally my foot in the door, but get the but more importantly get the um get the the awareness out there by not charging a fee for, for something that people still don't know enough about to show them both the organisers and the and the gig and festival and club goers, so that that then but then again you know then it, it is is then charging nothing putting your standards low that they won't pay you in the future. Yeah, you know, it's kind of stuck, and, and stuck. saying that as 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 an organisation that didn't offer to pay you a fee because we have no budget, so <laughs> I understand that. That's fine. <laughs> I know, but it's we're part of the problem. Uh, it was something that was raised to me by uh, a wonderful trans woman uh, who I work with, uh, and I I really had to check my own assumptions. I was like, wow, yeah, you know, um, it's a it's it's a really challenging point, um, but. But one that's often not talked about enough, I don't think. No, but I think budgets is a big thing, and it's it's the barrier for a lot of festivals. I mean, festivals are suffering worldwide anyway. So clubs, um, hopefully they're on the on the on the kind of incline if it's a little bit slow. Um, but it's a it's the barrier to it. You know, these things cost money, and the money that they receive from the very small ratio of people that are disabled that come and pay the ticket money isn't enough to cover those changes. So. What does it mean? And does the government have to help more? Does there have to be more grants? Does there have to be more, um, more campaigns to to provide funding? I think that's where that's where it's needed. That's where it's needed. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I was just reading the other day that a lot of pressure on organisations is to cut EDI budgets, like local local government, local authorities, things like that. So, yeah, I know our organisation. Yeah, like it's it's. A, it's it, we just, we just haven't got really much more like, yeah. 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 It might be more free work. <laughs> yeah. Any, uh, we're, we've got about uh, 10 minutes left, a few people dropping off now. So uh, if does anyone have any more comments or questions? But then again, you know, um, I'm like, this is why you kind of, you're listening to a to a to a, um, a a meeting or presentation, and you think of the question about an hour later, don't you? So, if there's any question, I mean, again, you know, Sam can let everyone know. Um, uh, but there'll be there'll be, be a way you can get in touch with me directly. You know, mm -hmm. that you can share afterwards. That, that I'm more than happy for anyone to contact me, just to connect and keep in touch. You don't have to have a question, 
or if you have a question and didn't feel like answering it um, live or if you're listening to it afterwards then please just drop I'm, I'm always up for answering anything any questions that's wonderful yeah that that would be great thank you yeah so i'll send all the resources to everyone who's rsvp'd um both in like the public universe event and um to our membership so people can get in touch with you and see more about the organization Awesome. And how can people watch back? Um, is that public or do they have to sign up for that? Uh, I think we can probably make it public. I'll, I'll double check that, but I think I can pop that okay. on on our YouTube. With it. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks for it's coming. So, it's so good to be, no, it's so good, so good to be part of it. Um, I've been a kind of fan of um, the association for a long time now. Um, and and it's just brilliant that, that you have this group for DNI as well. I think just the fact that all these organisations that are the spearheaders and the and the and the groups that are, that that are, that are forward thinking, um, and the fact that it's a you know, again, electronic music is seen as a niche anyway, isn't it? Still within the big kind of um, sphere of music, I think it's great that you've got that you've got this group. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you, and thank you so much for your time, for getting up early, and yeah, no problem, everyone, for coming really- along. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Uh, and and you. For everybody who's uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. See you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.